all dear my friends today good evening dr vagyan and yeah. welcome yeah yeah thank you very much dr priyanka so we can start our session now yeah. good evening today's topic is operative vaginal delivery so the introduction dr ajay sir please unmute you yourself we can't hear you yeah now yeah sure yeah right. operative vaginal delivery refers to a delivery in which the operator uses forceps or a vacuum device to assist the mother for the child birth the instrument applied to the fetal head and then the operator uses traction to extract the fetus typically during a contraction along with pushing efforts of the mother during the second stage of the labor one may require assistance when maternal efforts fail to effect the delivery or when there are non assuring fhr patterns therefore the ability to perform an ovd with forceps or vacuum remains a vital skill for those who provide maternity care in fact WHO thinks that it is an essential skill for the persons who practice obstetrics. Classification of operative vaginal delivery. Fetal extraction is classified by the status of the fetal head at the time of operative vaginal delivery and the degree of rotation there are basically four types but here we can describe three types of delivery that is outlet where fetal scalp is visible without separating the labia fetal skull has reached the pelvic floor and fetal head is at or on the perineum sagittal suture is in ap or roa loa or op occiput posterior position rotation does not exceed beyond 45 degrees then the low delivery leading point of the fetal skull is at station plus 2 or more and not on the pelvic floor without rotation or with rotation which is 45 degrees or less with rotation rotation is more than 45 degrees then mid delivery station is above plus 2 but head is engaged that is at ischial spines this is the classification by american acog then indications for ovd fetal distress non reassuring fhr Actually, we are unable to see your slides na okay. we are unable to so ha yeah please yes, sir. now no, no sir please no 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 sir no sir actually it is getting i think it is sir, getting delayed i can no. see the slide but uh, on screen you have to share the screen sir Uh, I am sharing the screen. I have shared with Dr. Priya. If, if it is possible that you can share the slides, then also it is okay. Oh uh, yes, sir. I will try my best. Yes, yeah, please, yeah. sir. Yeah. Until that, I will keep it on. Yeah. Okay. The indications for OVD: fetal distress, that is non-reassuring FHR patterns. Ideally, the fetal heart rate is about one twenty to one sixty. it is assumed to be normal during contraction the fhs we can see during the second stage of labor the fhs goes down below 100 sometimes but within few seconds when the contraction is over we can see that the fhs are increasing rapidly so if we are seeing that there are non reassuring fhr patterns on nst non stress test machine or also during fhs monitoring during routine labor care then we can assume that there is a fetal distress then maternal exhaustion uh sorry to disturb you sir but i didn't get get your ppts this sent ppts to me yeah, yeah i will try to share yeah yeah 
make him a host just select his name and make him a host he will share okay ma'am okay sir actually i am sharing sir dr ajay your... now you can share your ppt no no sir i am actually sharing my screen and ppt also i am uh, it is visible on my laptop no no now you now you can share now you are a host so now you can share the ppt okay yes okay yes thank you now you are host and guest also yes sir thank you thank you yeah. so maternal exhaustion sometimes uh, it is practiced that whenever the labor pains start the people start to push the baby and this causes the maternal exhaustion another thing ideally in my routine practice i keep the patient hydrated properly the patient who are referred from government institutes or some pscs or another centers they do not administer iv fluid or proper diet to the patient that is the main thing that the mother gets exhausted during the labor pains prolonged st second stage of labor in primary if the second stage is prolonged beyond 2 hours and in multi if it is prolonged than 1 hours then it is uh, causing trouble to the fetus or to the mother to shorten and the reduce the adverse effects of second stage of labor in a mother with other medical condition like for example cardiac diseases hypertensive disorders myasthenia gravis spinal cord injury patients which are at risk of autonomic dysreflexia and proliferative retinopathy in proliferative retinopathy already the pressure is increase so there is chance of retinal hemorrhage so we have to reduce second stage in such cases these are examples but the important thing is that no indication is absolute and it can differ from patient to patient if the clinician thinks that it is the time for an operative vaginal delivery then he can opt for the vaginal delivery that is operative vaginal delivery that is the choice of the clinician contraindications to operative vaginal delivery absolute contraindications non vertex or bro presentation second unengaged head in non vertex or bro, bro presentation it is unable for us tere dost hai na aur baat sat koi jaata hai in non vertex or bro presentation it is unable to attach the instrument that is we have to get a point or a position to attach the instrument properly in unengaged head it is absolutely contraindicated if there is incomplete cervical dilatation then also we should not opt operative vaginal delivery clinical evidence of cephalopelvic disproportion if the head is palpable still abdominally and not engaged then that is an evidence of cpd fetal coagulopathy if there are some bleeding disorders of fetus that are to be suspected then the operative vaginal delivery should not be conducted relative contraindications unfavorable attitude of the fetal head that is deflex head if during pv examination molding has not been occurred and you find that there is palpation of both of the fontanelles easily then the head is not flex fully flex in a fully flex head we can easily palpate the posterior fontanelle and with difficulty the anterior front so the attitude of the universal attitude of the head is flexion that should be achieved as soon as the head reaches the pelvic floor rotation should be more than 45 degrees from the occiput anterior or the occiput posterior position station at mid pelvis and fetal prematurity these are the contraindications for operative vaginal delivery contraindication specially for vacuum delivery number one is cephalopelvic disproportion 
another petal head is not engaged gestational age less than 34 weeks if the fetus is less than 34 weeks and if we apply ventus on that then there is a chance of caput formation then intracranial hemorrhage uh, so it is not indicated before 34 weeks certain fetal conditions such as fetal bleeding disorders for example hemophilia neonatal alveolar thrombocytopenia von willebrand disease and fetal demineralizing disease example given osteogenesis imperfecta etc in which we cannot apply or use vacuum non cephalic or face presentation that is also an contraindication prerequisites for operative vaginal delivery complete abdominal and careful vaginal examination this should be the routine practice in our day to day obstetric practice and we all know that everyone performs this kind of examination frequently as we taught in our institute but if you are going to perform an operative vaginal delivery you should re examine the patient uh, for the engagement then i am getting some noise from dr pradna madam careful vaginal examination sir mitla vate piche tau ki ganvai complete abdominal and careful vaginal examination that is the dilatation of the cervix then effacement of the cervix then the position of the vertex the rotation and the station whether the membranes are present or ruptured that is also important emptying of the maternal bladder if the maternal bladder is not empty then it may be harmful for the bladder and it may cause bladder injury or it may lead to various kind of fistula that is vesico vaginal fistula engagement of fetal head ruptured membranes fully dilated cervix assessment of caput and molding caput and molding represent some kind of fetal distress if the molding is not reversible then that may indicate cpd or borderline pelvis flexion of head irreducible molding may indicates determination of exact position of fetal head pro for proper placement of the instrument there are some point for example flexion point where we apply the ventus the mother for the procedure after informed written consent the mother should be prepared for the procedure after informed written consent we have to instruct her what we are going to do with her adequate anesthesia original block is preferred in the rural areas where i practice we continue our work or perform our work with local anesthesia only but in metro cities where the patient is willing for operative vaginal delivery you can prefer other blocks also a septic technique should be obtained because we are going to perform that vaginal operations for quite longer time than the other normal delivery procedures so a septic technique should be maintained there are uh, emergencies in obstetrics where we apply op op for operative vaginal delivery so we have to maintain strict asepsis skilled operator and staff required the person who is conducting the delivery should be very well trained to perform such kind of operations and also his or her staff should be well acquainted with the uh, procedures of op operative vaginal delivery neonatal resuscitation and other things if required adequate facilities are available if blood or anesthetics or all these things are required then that should be kept in hand backup plan in case of failure to deliver 
many a times due to certain conditions the patient is not cooperative for this kind of procedure because they are painful they are not having any anesthesia proper anesthesia then the patient doesn't cooperate and we have to opt the cesarean section and it is observed that the cesarean birth after such kind of attempts of operative vaginal delivery that is forceful delivery or induced delivery the baby comes out in jeopardy so neonatal resuscitation is required at most times so forceps this is the structure of the forceps this is the toe this is pelvic curve and the another side is cephalic curve this is the fenestration some forceps are solid but this is a fenestrated forceps toe curve and heel this constitute the blade the part which connects the handle and the blade is called as the shank this is the lock as there are two parts of the blade the centrally there is a placement to attach these parts that is called as lock and this is the handle to hold the forceps blades grasp the fetus each blade has a curve to fit around the fetus that is cephalic curve the blades are oval or elliptical and can be fenestrated with a hole in the middle or solid many blades are also curved in a plane 90 degrees from the cephalic curve to fit the maternal pelvis that is pelvic curve shanks shanks connect the blades to the handles and provide the length of the device they are either parallel or crossing these are the types of the shanks that is cross divergent parallel or convergent lock there are four types of lock lock is the articulation between the shanks many different types have been designed this is the french lock this is the german lock english lock sliding lock handles the handles are where the operator holds the device and applies traction to the fetal head types of forceps more than 700 types of obstetric forceps have been described each of the three main types that is outlet mid cavity or rotational forceps is appropriate for the specific situations and require differing levels of expertise nowadays outlet forceps are to be routinely applied and mid cavity and rotational forceps are extinct nowadays classical instruments originally designed by james yen simpson simpson regley and george l elliot junior in the mid 19th century they are used for outlet and low pelvic rotational delivery these are the classical instruments simpson forceps and regley forceps specialized instruments designed for specific indications like number 1 killands forceps for mid pelvic rotation and correction of asynclitism asynclitism that is deflex vertex piper's forceps for delivery of after coming head in the breech it is a slender forcep having long blades and it is applied for the after coming head in the breech lofes forceps with the divergent or parallel blade is so designed to limit fetal cranial compression especially in preterm labor patients bands neville and hague ferguson's forceps for axis traction there are some images of killand forceps piper forceps lofes forceps bans neville and hack ferguson they are having axis traction device here types of application of forceps blade number 1 cephalic application when we apply the blades according to the head of the fetus then it is called as 
cephalic application so the long axis of the blades correspond to the occipital mental position and the ends of the blades line over the posterior cheeks the sagittal sutures of the fetal head will be in the middle and the blades will be equidistant from the sagittal and occipital sutures at no times should any part of the forceps cover any midline structure forceps forceps should not be applied to the midline of the any structure they should be applied on the sides of the head of the fetus another test confirmatory test that forceps are applied properly is that the forceps should lock easily without any force and stand parallel to the plane of the floor the appropriateness of the application should be confirmed before applying traction the correct cephalic application is with the head in the occiput anterior position and the another one is pelvic application where we do not think about the fetal head and the forceps are applied along the lateral pelvic walls the most crucial point of forceps delivery is precise knowledge of the presentation position of the fetus the term pelvic application is used when the left blade is applied on the left side of the pelvis and the right blade is on the right side of the right side of the pelvis regardless of the fetal position a pelvic application may be appropriate in some instances as in direct occiput posterior presentation but pelvic application is never to be used as a substitute for the exact knowledge of the fetal position in appropriate pelvic application may cause significant harm serious compression effect on the cranium can occur so it should be avoided when the head is sufficiently rotated pelvic and cephalic application naturally coincide so rotation of the fetal head is the most important thing in applying the forceps if you are doubtful about the rotation in case of molding or caput formation then do not opt operative vaginal delivery or forceps delivery so here the proper application of the forceps low forceps has been shown functions of forceps how forceps work traction this is the most important function of the forceps pull required in a primary gravity is around 18 kg and multiply in 13 kg compression effect this is minimal when properly applied and should not be more than necessary to grab the head the compression should be just like that only minimal force is to be applied on the during the traction and on the fetal head however it has some pressure effect on the uh, head and the well occupied base of the skull rotation of the head this occurs with the use of killand forceps and also in low forceps with cephalic application with the occiput in the plus 2 or 10 o'clock position protective cage when applied on a premature baby it protects from the pressure of the birth canal when applied on the after coming head it lessens the sudden decompression effect as a vectis by applying one blade to deliver the head in cesarean section traction with forceps during a forceps delivery traction is applied during contractions it is important thing that the traction should be applied during only contractions the instrument may be used to maintain the station of the fetal head between the contraction sometime we can see that the fetus fetal head comes down descends down with the contraction and sometimes it goes upwards it happens in they, when there are cord around neck loops of cords around neck so here we can use the forceps to maintain the station of the fetal head between the contractions in an emergency applying continuous traction may be necessary until fetal head delivers in the last stage where without contraction we can also gradually apply some force to deliver the fetal head 
after confirming proper forceps application traction starts parallel to the plane of horizon first we have to apply, um, <clears throat> apply some pressure in horizontal direction and then gradually to the almost vertical position we have to mention the axis of the birth canal so we can have the safe fetal head descent the angle of traction is important as the force applied in effecting delivery knowing when to stop and abandon the procedure is a matter of experience so there is no criteria to describe here that when to stop it is the skill and judgment of the operator to decide we have to go for the operative delivery or we have to go for cesarean section assuming that everything has been done according to proper protocols and no progress is observable in three traction attempts three traction attempts are failed then the operative vaginal delivery should be discontinued and preparation for emergency lcs should be started immediately rather i would like to say that you should perform the operative vaginal delivery starting with all the necessary preparation for cesarean delivery anesthetic should be ready and if there is a chance of operative vaginal delivery then it should be performed into the ot itself and if your three attempts fail then immediately you can start the cesarean section so here is the traction in a parallel direction then downward then backward and then upward direction until the jaw reaches here these are the a b c d e f g h i j mnemonic for the forceps a address the patient ask for help adequate anesthesia b the bladder should be empty c the cervix should be fully dilated d determine the position of the head e equipment should be ready or forceps should be in a ready condition y forceps applied g gentle traction h handles are elevated to follow the j shape pelvic curve i evaluate for incision for episiotomy when the perineum distends j remove the forceps when the jaw is reachable technique of outlet forceps number 1 identification of the blades and their application the instrument should be placed in front of the pelvis i will show a video where i have shown all these things the instrument should be a place in front of the pelvis with the tip pointing upwards and the pelvic curve forwards first the left blade should be applied guided by the right hand then the right blade with the left hand locking of the blades the blade should articulate with ease indicating correct application if the forceps is not applied properly then the locking will not happen and if you are going to apply some pressure then the baby will pay for it clinical checks for correct forceps application sagittal suture lies in the midline of the shanks the operator is unable to place more than a fingertip between the fenestration of the blade and the fetal head is uh, fetal head on either side posterior fontanelle is not more than one finger breadth above the plane of the shanks of the forceps outlet forceps technique traction steady and intermittent traction to be applied during contraction first downwards backwards forwards and lastly upwards outlet forceps only two finger are to be introduced traction is applied straight horizontal upward and then forwards A removal of blade right blade should be removed first in occipital posterior position blades are to be applied as usual but they should be equidistant from sinciput and occiput that is the different difference traction horizontal to the root of the nose is under the pubic symphysis then upwards 
till the occiput emerges over the perineum and finally downwards this is the easiest and often the best method for an infant in the direct occiput posterior position if the head is low in the pelvis it is likely to be deliverable with a very little traction and the fetus is spared there is no manipulation so in these images we can see here the forceps so this is the first application of left blade application of the right blade in this image the blade has been applied appropriately and gradual traction is given here episiotomy and traction so here is one of the video Doctor Ajay, audio is not there. Doctor Ajay. Yeah, yeah, I am actually having an audio. Rotate the screen also. Whether it is audible now? Your not voice is only okay, no, sir. Video particular is not. Okay. Actually, I will explain if it is not uh, because I am getting the audio. Uh -huh. There is some kind of problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, no problem. But rotate the screen particular. Uh, I am not seeing the option here for the screen rotation. Just now you did, sir. A few minutes back, you rotated the screen. Just try it once again, sir. Yeah. All right. No, actually not yet. Okay. Okay. So, so here I'm uh, explaining the mnemonics again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, that is the mnemonics.
the scalp is visible and occiput anterior position is there the rotation rotation should not beyond ex exceed beyond 45 degrees on the right or the left our equipment should be ready for sep is ready episiotomy is required in forceps a big episiotomy is required we have to identify the blades at first this is the left blade and this is the right blade now we are going to apply the left blade first so the tip should be towards the sky with the help of the two fingers of the right hand gently apply the blade to the scalp of the fetus ask your assistant to hold the blade then the another blade in the similar manner on the right side you have applied both the blades just check once for the position now the traction downwards backwards horizontal and then upwards until the jaw reaches the perineum remove the first blade first that is the right blade left blade so here i have shown it on a coconut i learned and tried many times for a sip delivery on coconut first and then i applied it on the fetal head actually so the another point is trial of forceps knowing that a certain degree of disproportionate bed pelvis may take the procedure incompatible low or mid forceps delivery is attempted abandoning it at the earliest in favor of cesarean section so it should be done only in the operation theater keeping everything ready for cesarean section failed forceps when an unsuccessful attempt is made with the forceps resulting in fetal and or maternal injury mostly is due to lack of the obstetric skill and poor clinical judgment and not due to the instrument factors which are responsible for failed forceps are disproportion that is speeding incomplete cervical dilatation and mal position of the fetal head outcome and prognosis the ultimate outcome of forceps delivery depends upon numerous factors most important is the skill and judgment of the operator the operator must be supported by a skilled team including anesthesia and nursing staff the presence of a person skilled in newborn resuscitation is also mandatory for operative vaginal deliveries complications complications of forceps delivery are mostly due to faulty technique rather than the instrument maternal complications injury extension of the episiotomy involving anus and rectum or vaginal vault vaginal lacerations and cervical tear if cervix was not fully dilated postpartum hemorrhage due to trauma a tonic uterus or anesthetic anesthetic complications sorry pps due to trauma a tonic uterus or anesthetic complications shock shock due to blood loss dehydration or prolonged labor sepsis due to improper aseptic care or devitalization of local tissues there is possibility of sepsis anesthetic hazards 
then delayed or long term sequelae that is chronic low back ache genital prolapse stress incontinence anal sphincter dysfunction we can see in many post operative vaginal delivery patients that this type of complications may occur the frequent complications are anal sphincter dysfunction and chronic low back ache fetal complications birth asphyxia trauma intracranial hemorrhage cephalic hematoma facial or brachial palsy injury to the soft tissues of face and forehead skull fracture these are the immediate complications and the remote complications are cerebral palsy in some patients the fetal death may occur and the percentage around 2% our next topic is vacuum or ventus delivery malstrom device vacuum with a ring rigid metal cup and a separate suction catheter we can see here this is the ring and there is separate suction catheter attached laterally and connected to a foot operated pedal this this was the prime device so types of the vacuum device rigid or metal that is malstrom bird and other modifications silastic kobayashi plastic bell mushroom and soft modern day vacuum cups can be soft or rigid and can be different shapes and sizes in routine day to day practice there is small medium and large size of vacuum cups these may be anterior or posterior cups posterior cups have been designed for occiput posterior and asynclitic deliveries newer devices comes with or without separate suction device they are disposable so we can see here newer vacuum cup devices here the electric machine or suction is not required one can operate it easily this is kiwi omni cup a rigid plastic cup that is disc shape and model after the original bird posterior cup this is suitable for occiput posterior deliveries there is a hand pump suction here we have to attach the to be here and this suction cup doesn't require a tube a b c d e f g h i j mnemonic for vacuum slide one as we have seen in forceful delivery in vacuum delivery also we have to instruct the patient and discuss the risk and benefits of operative vaginal delivery assistant should be on hand for delivery of and for neonatal resuscitation and should be made aware that the use of the instruments how they are used what is to be done another steps because they are used to have normal deliveries and cesarean sections and all other procedures but uh, where there is a game of life and death that is operative vaginal delivery the operator should be courageous and the staff should be having knowledge and also confident analgesic should be administered if needed bladder should be emptied cervix it should be fully dilated and we have to determine the position of the head before applying the ventus equipment should be checked to ensure the vacuum and adequate suction we must follow this step sometimes we apply the vacuum and our suction doesn't work or doesn't have adequate pressure so it should be checked flexion point the flexion point is a point which is 3 cm away from the occiput and around 6 cm away from the sinciput and where we can attach the vacuum cup and we can apply a maximum traction and there is a minimum chance of detachment of the cup that is flexion point gentle traction should be given suction with the manometer is to be monitored and gentle traction at right angle to the plane of the cup during contraction is applied in the initial phase three disengagements of the vacuum or pop offs 
then if we are going to apply the vacuum for more than 20 minutes then we should stop our procedure after three consecutive pulls which result in no progress of the delivery incision for episiotomy previously it was recommended but nowadays during vacuum delivery episiotomy is not routinely emphasized the operator can decide according to the rigidity of the perineum remove the vacuum when the fetal jaw has been reached so here we have demonstrated the vacuum is applied and there is there is no contraction during contraction with the push ups of the mother gentle traction in horizontal direction and then according to the axis of the birth canal and as soon as jaw has been reached the cup has been removed complications maternal risk lesser maternal soft tissue trauma than the forceps delivery less general and regional anesthesia however vacuum extraction was more likely than forceps deliveries to fail so vacuum fails and forceps doesn't than the vacuum delivery neonatal cephalohematoma which may turn into hyperbilirubinemia retinal hemorrhage it usually results within four weeks shoulder dystocia rare but serious intracranial hemorrhage and subgluteal all or subaponeurotic hematoma and death signs and symptoms of serious intracranial injury in new how to diagnose that we are done something wrong with the fetus intracranial hemorrhage apnea bradycardia bulging fontanel convulsions irritability lethargy and poor feeding all these signs may indicate intracranial hemorrhage subglial hematoma diffuse head swelling that shifts with repositioning and indents on palpation signs of hypovolemic shock that is hypotension pallor tachycardia tachycardia swelling not limited by suture lines unlike cephalohematoma cephalohematoma is limited by suture lines but subglial hematoma is seen beyond the suture lines also these may not appear until several hours after birth so we have to careful monitor the baby in the postpartum period here also the video right on Sir, audio is not there. My audio. I have to again explain it. We are we are going to see whether the pressure is increasing or not. So we have to check the pressure. Here is our vacuum suction cup. It is made up of elastic material. There is tip to attach the suction tube, and there is a handle to hold. Here we are going to check the pressure on on hands. We can see the pressure is increasing. Now we are going to apply 
the vacuum at the flexion point the cup should be applied when there is no contraction if there is an increase pressure so we can release with the help of this knob the excessive pressure we have to see whether the cervix has not caught into the cup or any other skin or anything else gradually we have to apply the pressure in the horizontal and then in the upward direction as soon as the vertex reaches the perineum you can either release the pressure or remove the suction tube sorry for the trouble so post delivery care it is also an important part assessment of the mother vitals then the uterine action pph any lacerations thrombo prophylaxis if necessary in cases of if the patient is obese or having complications other medical conditions or pih then oral anti inflammatory and antipyretics in the absence of the contraindications first wide urine timings should be noted carefully the volume of the urine and post wide residue in case of retention of urine urinary incontinence if we observe any kind of urinary incontinence of if there is chance of urinary incontinence then postpartum physiotherapy for prevention and cure of the urinary incontinence counseling regarding contraception and future pregnancies tocophobia there is a term known as tocophobia in which the people experience the fear of future childbirth in ayurvedic texts also we can see the reference of garbhashanku in garbha sangha yoni samvaran or mood garbha in vagbhat sanhita there is garbhashanku described for the delivery of the baby if the garbhashanku fails then we have to deliver the baby by vama devi so this was all about operative vagina and delivery i think you have i have covered all of the points thank you very much for your patient listening thank you so much sir for your wonderful lecture you have explained it very well thank you very much dr priya ah uh, yes sir moving to the next session we will take question and answer sir uh, yeah, yeah. for this uh, i would like to uh, call dr shashi vankade sir sir please you can conduct the question answer session yeah okay thank you thank you dr priya thank you dr ajay Thank for you, uh, explaining thoroughly the topic you have uh, explained all the practical aspect of ovd now here is a question and answer session uh, i don't think uh, there is any doubt but uh, uh, some of uh, question in my mind simple question okay sir uh, one of it is uh, 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 if there is a cord around neck to the baby 
Yeah. Uh, we can we can see nowadays in UAG report, it is mentioned that uh, last trimester report it is mentioned that there is a cord around neck, <coughs> okay. and the situation is indicating for the OVD. Then yeah. uh, what is the uh, what would be the uh, what would be the better option, OVD or the uh, straight to the LSCS? See, uh, here where whenever there is cord around neck, then we can see. During labor, the progress is slower sometimes. The descent is slow, and in second stage of labor, there is a non-reassuring FHR pattern. If you are observing that there is non-reassuring FHR pattern, but the descent is good and the head is on perineum, and uh, there is no chance of outlet CPD, then you can deliver the baby as usual with the. operative version of it that is the forceps or vacuum whichever you are comfortable with but if acute very severe pitel distress is there or meconium strain like there is there then i would not uh, like to opt for the vacuum or forceps and will, i will opt for the cesarean section cord around neck is seen many times during uh, routine sonographic scans but i have observed that if we opt cesarean section For indicating in the report only, then sometimes it is not seen. I have done cesarean section of one patient with indication of two loops of cord around neck, and after uh, exploring, I saw no cord. So that happened in uh, past. Nowadays there are color Doppler ultrasounds, and they can accurately diagnose the conditions. But the fetal weight is adequate, the size of the baby is adequate, and there is no CPD. Then you can go for vaginal delivery with the help of the instruments no very nice sir very nice sir thank you uh, another thank question you so much, sir, sir. Uh, i have one question sir. okay sir. yeah yeah uh, i have uh, one uh, let it uh, ma'am uh, uh, let us finish the sorry, question sorry, and then uh, i will go uh, sure, sure, to sure, the sure. party please department. continue Okay. Sir, uh, one uh, simple question: We all observe, or all we all experience uh, during the uh, labor. <coughs> uh, though it is not mentioned in the book, also yeah. that uh, giving fundal fundal pressure in the second yeah. stage yes. can also be called as uh, operative vaginal uh, delivery or assisted technique for the vaginal delivery. Yeah, yeah, that is so, an assisted uh, technique. You have completed. Let uh, me ask you a question further. Uh, uh. Sir, uh, what is your remark for fundal pressure? I think uh, fundal pressure should be given when the mother is seen to be exhausted, or only one or two fundal pressures are be given during the contractions. But you cannot give fundal pressure for fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, or half an hour. because the uterus itself get exhausted and there is a, there are the chances of pph are increase in such kind of cases so fundal so fundal pressure should be given only one or one or two times or three times during the last stage and it should be mentioned as a part of an assisted delivery and not as operative delivery so there are only two kinds of operative delivery that is Forceps or vacuum. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I think the participant uh, may ask the question. Uh, who are asking? Uh, ask the question, or they can post in chat box also. Yes, you may post the uh, questions in chat box. I can read it for you. Uh, sir, one question from my side. Uh, you yes, mentioned sir. that uh, forcep needs traction in multi gravida thirteen uh, kg and in priming gravida like eighteen kg. Yeah, yeah. But if we are manually uh, pulling the pulling it, if we are manually keeping the force, so how can we measure the force in kg, sir? I mean, is it measurable by a human being? I mean, no, no. Actually, it has been given in the studies. Or that is a refer or reference range. As I have stated earlier, that is the uh, thing which is to be carried by skill and judgment only. 
so how how much the pressure is required is a matter of the operator in other text is it has been given as kilogram centimeter square also then mm of hg that is 400 to 650 mm of hg so that is not easy to calculate but the force should be applied in such a way that easy delivery is to be facilitated and uh, no Mm, such kind of force is to be applied that may harm the petal skull or the maternal tissue so that is a matter of anticipation okay sir thank you so much yes i am saying sorry dr shashi one question can you read it sir ha one question is come from came from dr sujata in case of Uh, FGR with normal Doppler study, can we give trial for normal delivery? In case uh, what of FG FGR, what is meant by FGR? I don't understand. Fetal growth uh, retardation. Okay. Okay. Fetal growth retardation. Uh, And, in I case mean, of FGR with normal Doppler study, can we give trial for the normal delivery? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, with we can give only. trial for normal delivery. If NST is operative vaginal reaction, if NST is good, then we can try for forceps. We can we can apply forceps in preterm birth also. So in a full term, IVR patients we can apply forceps. If the all all other conditions are favorable, if there is no mucinous stain lichen, if the labor progress is smooth, then we can op operative vaginal delivery. Rather, it is good. IUGR is not an absolute indication for cesarean section. There are only five absolute indications of cesarean section, as we all know it. Okay, very nice, sir. Any other question? You may send to chat box, or uh, you can ask directly. So one more question, can I ask? Yeah, yeah, yes, sure. sir, please. Yes. Sir, uh, in which medical condition in pregnancy we need to cut short the second stage of labor, sir? As we have seen earlier, the medical conditions that is the uh, some cardiac diseases, myasthenic diseases, or in some conditions like the maternal exhaustion is seen, then we have to cut short the second stage of labor. And fetal conditions also, if there is non-assuring FHR or uh, there is a delayed descent. Then we can uh, have this kind of operative vaginal deliveries in that patients. Okay, and if if the we want to cut uh, cut short the second stage of labor, and if cervix is not fully dilated, in that case, what yeah. to do, sir? We can uh, use some drugs like uh, dotaverine. which are smooth muscle relaxants we can manually uh, strip the cervix we can rupture the bag of waters it is not ruptured but the base basic thing is that if the fetal age is, head is engaged and there is one term it is known as tubular cervix or uh, hanging cervix if the head is pressure of the head is not applied properly on the cervix then it is called as hanging cervix and uh, in such cases Uh, in spite of good contractions the cervix doesn't get fully dilated okay so is yeah. there any um, such thing like we can take cut on the cervical uh, area also or on cervix can we do a, uh, take a cut some people in the past used to practice like that but the, the tear if the tear goes upwards there is a huge blood supply from cervical artery Then uterine artery, then again ovarian artery, to the uterus and all these things. So if there are uh, high chances for that in yeah, that yeah. condition, the PPH. Yeah. PPH. So if you are well skilled, you have good assistant, and then you can able to find the apex of the cervix or the tear. You can suture it. Uh, then you can opt that also. But okay. it is uh, it is a matter of uh, very. Uh, medical legal uh, problems or any other problems related with the patient yes sir definitely sir thank you so much yeah. dr priyanka ma'am huh 
हेलो जय हाय आई वुड लाइक इफ यू शेयर सम ऑफ योर थॉट्स अबाउट ओवीडी या इट वाज अ नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन एंड वेरी सिंपलीफाइड वेरी सिंपलीफाइड and uh, i think uh, that may even uh, beneficial for our pg students also who are uh, recently join in our group and uh, regarding your uh, means uh, presentation i think uh, there are uh, you have covered all the things uh, probably the indications contra indications requisites for uh, the uh, for instrumental delivery so i think a uh, very nice presentation by you thank you i would uh, share that videos which were not visible or audible in the this session on our yeah group. that you can yeah. share in the group also right. so right. it will be ha huh, it will be good for all and uh, uh, priya uh, if you have any questions oh. again dr oh. sashi oh. acha डॉक्टर मनीषा देवकते सेइंग नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन डॉक्टर अजय थैंक यू मैडम सर वी हैव अ बेटर मॉड्यूलिटी लाइक एलएसएस देन व्हाई वन शुड गो फॉर द असिस्टेड लेबर सर आई मीन दैट इज अ मोर सेफ प्रैक्टिस लाइक एलएसएस मेनी पीपल आर अवॉइडिंग टू अप्लाई फॉर सेप्स एंड वेंट्यूस इन नॉर्मल सॉरी इन प्राइवेट प्रैक्टिसेस देन व्हाट इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ इट एंड व्हाई शुड वन अप्लाई द Uh, for support went use very good question as uh, i have stated i am working in rural area of kokan where anesthetics are very sparse so we have to inform the patients in labor as soon as it comes to our hospital we have to inform the anesthetic sir there is one labor patients which i ordered in the anesthetic ask are yaar fir le lo usko jaldi le lo mujhe jana hai idhar call idhar call to aisa hota hai kabhi kabhi so sometimes if i feel that the patient may get uh, to be delivered vaginally then i uh, used to not to inform the anesthetic earlier because main jaise kaha hai wo kehte hai ki aap jaldi le lo fir usko time hai to kyu risk le to aisa hota hai sometimes so if the anesthetic is not present in time and if there is some condition just like non reassuring fhr so we should have this skill i do not say that you should not opt lscs but lscs is luxury in our area so if you are practicing in such area or due to any kind uh, any problem if the anesthetic is not available on time so this skill is essential for your in case of any emergency aapne live bachcha nikala hai बाद में उसका शिफ्ट हो गया है कई हो गया ये बात अलग होती है लेकिन अगर आपके पास मैटरनल डेथ या फिटल डेथ होता है तो आपके करियर का सवाल होता है ऐसी ऐसे वक्त आपको ऑपरेटिव वजनल डिलीवरी इज मस्ट तो बच्चे को लाइव निकालो उसको एन में शिफ्ट करो माइनर कुछ प्रॉब्लम है वो रिजॉल्व हो जाते हैं जो भी कॉम्प्लिकेशन बताए हाइपर में आए क्या या फिर और कोई है उसमें से कुछ कंडीशन ऐसी वो रिजॉल्व हो सकती है मगर अच्छे अगर किसी कारणवश आप एल Within time नहीं कर पाए तो आपको जो हार्म हो सकता है वो बियॉन्ड लिमिटेशन है इसीलिए आपको ये स्किल आना चाहिए एल एस सी एस तो प्रिफर्ड है ही उसके बारे में तो कोई दिक्कत ही नहीं है मगर ये स्किल हासिल करने के लिए मैंने खुद बहुत मेहनत किया फोरसेप्स के लिए हमें ये इंस्टीट्यूट में सिखाया नहीं गया था हम ये खुद होके सिखाए तो अब मैं ऐसा चाहता हूँ कि जो आने वाली जो जनरेशन है वो भी इसको सीखना चाहिए actually priya this job is very tough and very uh, it requires a very good skill and dr ajay uh, i think uh, he is uh, one of them like that who is uh, performing uh, in rural area where uh, such conditions are uh, very uh, frequent uh, not getting uh, means anesthetics and other facilities so in that condition what the best of uh, can a gynecologist do for the patient so so that these skills are uh, should be developed and should be practiced in our institutional levels also so definitely ma'am but I when when uh, he is doing a very good job i really admire him for this because uh, as per the limits uh, he has and uh, he is uh, doing a very uh, confidentially uh, very uh, doing all this uh, operative uh, vaginal deliveries even when i ask him 
for this lecture. He was just had uh, done one four step delivery before the day uh, uh, before I asked him for this webinar, Hannah. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> It's, it's really commendable, sir, because when we uh, used to practice at civil hospital also, there was there even uh, forcep war uh, was, uh, you know, it was totally banned and uh, no one was using forceps even at civil uh, hospital also. So mm -hmm. uh, no one is using forceps nowadays. So you are one of the rare, <laughs> rare people, sir. Mm -hmm. I, I know that one of the uh, rare and one of the dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm as we sure. as we definitely all know. it needs uh, you staring, sir. Yeah, yeah. As we all know that <laughs> we are still, Irish. Still, uh, I think uh, very down to earth personality uh, and such a social social one, uh, very friendly. And uh, I think uh, he he has a lot of guts in this uh, skill. Uh, people should learn from this PGs and other students also in the faculties that uh, mental delivery is uh, is uh, uh, very difficult uh, to handle and it can be achieved uh, unless and until you practiced it and uh, experienced it in your by your uh, routine daily practice. Yes, yes, definitely, ma'am. Uh, sir, one more question I wanted to ask. Uh, yeah. You shown us a video of vacuum extraction. Uh, yes, yes. In that you used that uh, uh, vacuum suction machine. Even we use uh, that machine in our hospital. But how yes, to yes. measure the pressure by applying uh, this much? I mean, uh, that vacuum machine create too much pressure. So how to control it uh, through the, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah. There is a knob. How to control the pressure. Yeah. There is a knob. There are two knobs. One on the vacuum machine also. You can adjust the pressure from 15 to 20. That is sufficient. In okay. some cases, you can require up to 25 also. It is calibrated from 0 to 30. So the pressure should be around 15 to 20. If you see that pressure is increases, uh, going to increase or the uh, machine is not calibrated or the screw, there, there is one kind of knob placed uh, at the zero side of uh, that uh, man manometer. And uh, we can adjust the pressure with that knob. If you, if you see the machine, you will see that. And also the vacuum has a knob. I have shown in that video also. I will put that videos in our group uh, to see it because today we were unable to hear and see it. I have mentioned in that video, but you can adjust the pressure both uh, on the machine also and on the vacuum cup also. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, anyone Priya. from the... yes, sir. And uh, Ajay, my request yes. uh, for you, uh, if uh, you got uh, some uh, cases like that. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Please, please continue. You are audible. As soon yeah, as I am uh, requesting you, Ajay, if you found some patients, now uh, uh, at that time, please record that video for us. Definitely. Dr. Shashi, sir. Yes. Uh, um, all the points are discussed very uh, clean and clearly by Dr. Rajan. Uh, Dr. Priya, uh, I think you, you may proceed for the vote of thanks. Okay, definitely. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, okay. uh, we had a very wonderful lecture by Dr. Ajay Raj Bal, sir. Uh, here we are moving to the last session of our, of this webinar. Uh, special and last thing, vote of thanks. Uh, on behalf of Nima OBGY Society Central and Nima OBGY Society Maharashtra, I would like to express my gratitude to Nima Central, uh, Dr. Nima Central President, Dr. Vinayak Temurnikar Sir, Secretary, Dr. Ashutosh Kulkarni Sir, and uh, Treasurer, Dr. U.S. Pandey Sir, for their remarkable support. Uh, to form Nima OBGY body. I extend my gratitude to our central president, uh, Dr. Kamini Diman, ma'am, secretary, Dr. Priyanka Nakade, ma'am, and treasurer, Dr. Vishnu Bhavne, sir, for supporting and guiding us to conduct today's webinar. I would also like to thank and extend my gratitude to our eminent speaker, Dr. Ajayraj Bal, sir, who took time from their busy schedule and delivered a very knowledgeable and wonderful session I would like to further uh, extend my gratitude to the Nima OBGY Maharashtra President, Dr. Suhas Herlikar, sir, 
secretary dr manoj gaikwad sir treasurer dr ajay raj bal sir for all they and their support and conduct uh, today's webinar i would also like to thank all the help and technical support required for the smooth and interrupted uh, functioning of the webinar last but not the least i would like to thank from bottom of my heart all the delegates from their participants uh, for the, from their uh, for their participation and presence without uh, without them uh, it would have not uh, possible to conduct this uh, webinar now with due permission from all the dignitaries i am conducting today's uh, uh, vote of thanks and i uh, take your permission to close this ceremony yeah priya this is our last webinar of this year i think uh, we will be with the new uh, subjects and uh, with uh, our other uh, webinars in next year so all yes, of you uh, all of you uh, keep in touch with this webinar series and yes. Uh, yes of course now we can conclude dr priya thank you yes, dr rajma for being thank with you. us today thank you all of you too <laughs> thank you yeah. so much everyone yeah. let's meet in yeah. next year with yeah. the uh, new topic <laughs> yes. yes okay yeah. bye yeah. okay thank, thank you thank you all yeah thank you so much